Hello, everyone. I hope everyone's doing well on this holidays. Um, I'm having a good time because it's Monday and normally I would be at work. And I'm not. And I'm getting paid. So, you know, that's, that's fine. Um, during this last diamond uh, lock disassembly and dissection, I realized that uh, I have um, some warded padlocks are some of the cheapest locks you can find out there and uh i'm not exactly sure how that i know what it is you know i know how the mechanism works but i'm not sure how different it is between this one and that one so i only have two warded locks and this one is not going to be sacrificed because it's a very old master lock you can tell this is what i mean by uh antiques as opposed to new you see these laminates here master lock does it the same way they don't really smooth these or make these even back in the day somebody either took them to a grinder or they made them well enough i think they just finished them off on a grinder because this is smooth the lettering on here you see they took a little artistic um skill you know and and made that fit around there instead of just you know it's probably been stamped in because it's on a plate, you know. And the same way with the, with the lettering on their lock. They didn't have to use a standard, you know, font and everything. They changed it up a little bit and made it pretty good. Um, this was one that would take one of those kind of like corrugated type of keys. Uh, but all, all warded locks, you know, usually work. And this is a, a the sparrow set, but the, usually that set of five there. You don't always get this extra one, but that's a lot of times that's handy because uh, the depth isn't always right. And on these, usually you just sit there and try to match up whatever the widest one that'll fit in will work. You know that one's a little bit too wide. You can start. I usually start with a single, but I'm going to go with the double on this on it, on it this time. And uh, it feels like it's hitting up against a ward. So you go in with the single. Sometimes it's tricky finding There he is. It's tricky finding them, but usually it's all the way up in the end. You just push it in like a key and turn. That's why the way this one is spaced, look at the, look how far away that would have been if, if you were to try to just grind off the last part. And this is also why this tool won't work on these. Or doesn't work on those. Now maybe if you pull it back just right. And you could catch that. But that is a super strong spring. So. Um, of these two warded ones. You know this guy's Chinese. And uh, he volunteered. He said you know what. I want to be torn open. Just like my buddy. Just to show how different I am from that one. Now this one here, they at least, you know, it's a, it's a, this one is also an antique, um, I think it was made in the 60s, 50s, 60s, somewhere around there, um, but they painted the, in, the, uh, the smaller laminate, see, they, they took a little bit of pride, even over in China, where they're trying to save money on everything all the time, making copies of stuff. Uh, this guy has another, he's another one that has kind of like a weird, you know, half moon crescent type of keyway. Uh, but pretty easy to open. You go all the way to the bottom. The mechanism is at the bottom. Um, and if you look in there, you see the wards, but there are no extra little springs in between. That's, that's the difference between this type of, uh, padlock and the other one. And... The actuator is down there at the bottom. So what I'm going to do is grind off the ends off this and take this one apart piece by piece like we did the, uh, uh, the diamond back there until we get to the locking mechanism itself. And then I'm going to see what the difference between that is. This is probably just exactly the same mechanism as the one in that old master lock back there. So there you go. Um, I may have seen somebody dissect one of these on video before, but I don't remember it. And there's nothing like seeing it yourself and comparing it 
rather than you know going on YouTube and trying to figure out how different that mechanism is from this one when you can just physically ooh, look he's trying to jump away when you can just physically see it so there you go I'll be back after this thing's ground off and while grinding it down I found this hidden underneath there it was made at first it said China then it's now it says it's made in sane <laughs> made in sane uh, um, normally I grind these just the tips off and you can take a chisel you know and hammer the heads off but this one was being stubborn and so I ground the crap out of it because this, this first laminate can be a little bit of a pain in the butt to get off but there you go all right so here's your first plate pried off this is what I was missing from the other one because I pried it off in the bedroom it's a little spring shot off somewhere and you have the uh this one acts kind of like as your first warding, I guess, you know, it, it would have to have that shape fit in there. And it has a limiter to limit the rotation. And then you have here the, the bottom plate. And you have your first, your second laminate. These all come off easy now. But you just have these different cutouts. Um... That's the first one. Let's take them off. And just face them up. And then you just have a bunch of these until you run into... These are just spacers. I should put them precisely the way they go. Okay, so I want to put it back together. And there's your first ward right there. It's kind of like the shape of that initial one up there these come apart real easy just a little bit of oil on them probably to help keep it from rusting you have more spacers what we want to get to is the actual actuator the locking mechanism see that's why i was wondering why the diamond one because this is much easier to make all you have to do is just put a just make a different stamping that's got your ward in there like this and uh you don't have to add all these extra little springs and crap but that may have been to help stabilize the uh if you were just doing it on one axis it might help stabilize the spring it could also i mean the key it could also be designed simply to confuse you too you know i mean you look at it and you think it moves it's got to be it's got to have something to do you've got to move it and that's what i would have done it would have kept me busy for a while okay we're getting close to the actuator here because here's the we still have another bit of warding we have to get through we can't because uh this this little piece right here so when they make this they probably put a few in you know and loop it this way uh, backwards but, uh oh, they want one of my little posts. Stay in there, post. We need you in there. Alright, so let's pull this up. And let's see if we can find out what the mechanism is. Another bit of warding. It looks just like... So that other one is um, a warded padlock. It's just got extra stuff in it. And uh, I probably can take a, an Allen key and grind it down to just the right angle. I'm trying to get up in here. It's falling apart because I pulled it away from the, the housing. But it's a, a lot smaller spring. Let me get it out of there. Look at that. That's just a little tiny. That's just a little tiny spring that's pushing on this paw hiding in there. And this just holds in a the cutout of the What does that do? I don't see a cutout on the shackle.
guess it would be all the way up like that. And when it's closed. Oh, oh, oh. It's there. I was looking for it on the base, and I'm going, how does this thing work? Because that other one had a round cut out. No, it's over here. So that's the, another difference on this. You have a locking pawl over here that's engaged. And that's all you're, you're pulling on. The same way that you would shim a, a warded lock is the same way you're, you're basically bypassing it when you pull on that spring. So that's interesting. That's different. Um, because as you can see, this one has no no uh, thing on it like that. And it's got one hell of a spring. Plus, you combine those other springs. I've got the other pieces back there. But if you combine all those other springs, when you compress this one, you're also pushing on the, the middle piece of that, that wrapped up spring, which gives it even uh, more tension. So the legs are sitting right on here. So when you push this thing down to disengage, when you push this one down to disengage, uh, you're pushing on all those springs. And that's the only function i can see those springs doing that helps anything towards is just to give it more resistance and it's already got enough look <laughs> little bitty tiny spring compared to damn near couch spring type of size spring or car leaf spring or coil spring or something i don't know anyways so I guess this one is a modified warded padlock. And this is your kind of like standard warded padlock. That it's just somebody is up there holding the pawl. And all these other plates up here are just to prevent you from using a screwdriver and going in there and going, Eek. open. That's all that is. This one's a little bit more sophisticated design for some reason. I don't see a, a great deal of advantage other than, you know what? None of those uh, warded keys worked on this one. So I'm, I'm getting some more in of these uh, padlocks, new ones, and I'm uh, like new old stock and uh, stuff like that. And when they come in, I won't disassemble them because I already know what the mechanism is like. And I know that those springs are there to confuse you or... It does prevent a, a, a tool, you know, flat piece of metal from just going straight in. You know, those springs, when, they're, when it's locked like that, are sticking up out in the keyway more. They're kind of like blocking. So for you to get a piece of metal in there, you would be bumping into those. You would have to compress those to get there. So it does serve some kind of like anti-bypass, um, anti-pick function in there, so... Anyways, hope you enjoyed that, and uh, sorry for rambling on, but it's a Monday, I had nothing better to do, and I haven't had my coffee yet. So, happy holidays, everyone, and hopefully you can have the new year is coming up, and I really enjoyed this last year, I've learned a lot in picking, I've met a lot of new people and new friends in uh, the Locksport community, and uh, it's just been really, I didn't think it could get any better than the first opening of a lock, but, you know... Uh, this has really been a great journey on this, and uh, thank you for coming along with my journey.